So I guess it's time for me and one honorary introduction. Um, thank you very much and very nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Casper. I am a chief operating officer at and a co-founder at Acori, where we're developing a new standard in heart failure management. So heart failure, it's a massive global disease area. It's impacted more than 60 million patients worldwide, and it's actually the number one cause of hospitalization in people above 65 years in most regions around the world. Unfortunately, only about 11% of these patients receive the care that they should be getting. And what we know about heart failure is that you want to manage the intracardiac pressures. That's the blood pressures inside of the heart's chambers. But all current solutions, they look like this. So they require a lot of equipment and they're all invasive. So you, you put a catheter, a tube inside of the heart chambers to actually assess those pressures. Since all current solutions are invasive, it limits the widespread applicability of the solutions, limiting the care for patients in need. And that's where we come into the picture. So Acri, it's a combination of three words, acoustic, core, and AI. Namely, listen to your heart with AI. And we've developed the world's first handheld, scalable, and non-invasive intracardiac pressure monitoring device. This enables improved patient outcomes, fewer treatment complications, but also reducing the length of stay and readmissions in heart failure patients. I'd like to, now I'd like to show you a video of how our device works. The Acari Heart Monitor is the only device to employ ICPM using technology that is completely non-invasive. Just place the device on the patient's chest for two minutes while the SAVE sensor system records the seismic, acoustic, visual, and electric waves. Our machine learning model analyzes the data to determine intracardiac pressures with better accuracy than standard of care tools. Acari the new standard in heart failure management. So this is a patented technology that we've developed in-house, which has been clinically validated in 400 patients in Sweden, which has enabled us to receive the FDA breakthrough device designation earlier this year. We're targeting a large global $10 billion opportunity and we're approaching this market through a three-staged approach. First of all, we're looking to get our device into the inpatient environment in the cardiologist's hands. Secondly, we, we see a strong opportunity in outpatient facilities, such as primary care environments, but also getting into the patient's homes for remote patient monitoring. In the end, covering the heart failure patient journey end to end. But I don't just want you to take my words for it. So we've interviewed more than 100 cardiologists, health economists, chief medical officers to understand the utilization of our device, but also how we would sell. And we've gotten the indication that eight out of 10 would be willing to buy our device even without reimbursement in place. With a leasing model of probably $7,500 per year, this enables strong unit economic and a sticky application in the workflows. We're founded in 2019, and I've talked about some of our achievements to date. We've raised 4 million to date, and we're currently closing an oversubscribed 4 million round, and we recently received the EIC Accelerate Grant in Blended Finance. Currently, we're focused on managing our global study, where we're targeting 1,200 patients across five sites in Europe, five sites in the US, and two sites in Canada. This will enable regulatory submissions by mid next year, targeting FDA and CE approval sometime Q1, Q2 in 2025. We are a Swedish co-founding team of me, Casper, Philip, and Jacob. And we've surrounded ourselves with experienced professionals who have brought similar devices to market previously. We're currently 13 employees and constantly growing, and we have roughly 10 to 50 consultants in the extended team. I'm very thankful for you having me here today, and I'd like to invite you all to join us in transforming heart failure management. Thank you very much. Yeah,
maybe if I can start uh, a quick question, I'd like to go back on your go-to-market strategy um, as you have a lot of options there in terms of uh, commercialization. Um, what's your initial thoughts, and especially in terms of geographies that you want to target? Because uh, the different, if you're targeting a reimbursement scheme, I guess that it could be very dependent on the countries that you're addressing. So I'd like to go a little bit deeper there in terms of strategy. Yeah, so in, in terms of geographies, um, USA is our number one market, shortly followed by um, European markets like EU Big Five. Um, in terms of, and, and that comes down as well to, as you're mentioning, the, the commercial incentives and approach to the markets where we, as mentioned, we've seen a lot of interest, especially in the US, for buying the device without reimbursement in place, which is a unique situation. But it comes back to most heart failure admissions today being loss making. So practitioners and health economists like they see that by using our device, they can reduce the length of stay, the readmission rates, and hence also the costs of heart failure admissions in general. So that's kind of the starting point, And that's where we see that. Also, cardiologists being the gatekeepers to the market. Um, so if they trust the device, it's easier to also move into other workflows. Uh, may I have a question about commercials? Uh, what, what would be, let's say, the lifetime value for the device sold or like average contract value when you sell a device? Actually, can I still move the slides? Yeah, I can. Um, so as you see on the left-hand side, we're, we're selling the device at a subscription per device. So that's an annual fee. Um, so with uh, a five-year um, lifetime of the device, that's um, $34,500. So with the same cost of goods sold, the, the gross margin is continuously improving as well over time. Thank you. Cheers. I also have a <clears throat> question on the device. Does the AI run on the device or is it run in the cloud? It's it's all on the device, so it doesn't require any kind of connection. Uh, it does have a Wi-Fi and cellular connection, but it's not necessary for the functionality of the device. Okay, so also the patient data doesn't leave the premise of the of the hospital. No, exactly. So we, we have the option to obviously incorporate it to uh, or integrate it to electronic health records, but all the computation is run on the device. Okay, maybe one follow up question is the ICPM procedure mostly done in, in clinics, right? Or is there also resident cardiologists that conduct that? Uh, most of them in clinic, correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And another question on my side, I maybe missed it on the slide. Um, how you, how do you differentiate from the competition? Um, well, well, most or yeah, the only current solutions in the market are invasive, so they require mm -hmm. um, a catheter being put inside of their chest. So, requiring all this equipment, um, a trade cardiologist. Whereas our device, you basically just put it on top of the chest for a few minutes, after which you get the intracardiac pressures. Um, why we are able to do this as the first non-invasive company, it comes down to the sensor technology. So we have what we call the SAVE sensor system, which is a combination of four sensor modalities. And that's the most advanced combination on the market today. Most current non-invasive solutions leverage one or two sensor types, but that doesn't give the um, fidelity of data needed, basically. So... That's kind of our, our golden nugget, having the most advanced sensor combination market. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Let's see, we have 30 seconds left. So uh, yeah, maybe one more question from my side. Uh, where did you get the data from? And um, you mentioned that the accuracy of detecting um, an incident is, is higher than the traditional way of doing it. So high, high, how high is the accuracy? So 
Um, in terms of data sets, we get it from our own clinical studies, but we've also received data from our partners, such as Mayo Clinic and Cedar sinai in the U.S. In terms of accuracies, um, we're not, so we have the gold standard, the right heart catheter, which is what we are comparing ourselves to. Um, then again, you have um, one other implantable device, which you use for remote monitoring. It's called CardioMems, it's an Abbott device. And in our first initial um, tests, we've seen that we are as accurate as that device. So that's the comparison to the implantable devices. Mm-hmm.